Um, we've made a lot of predictions on this program. Uh, many of them have already happened. Still, others uh, are just unfolding now. Um, and some of them, I hope, never do happen. I issued a warning seven years ago on Iran. I said the world will do nothing, and Iran will develop nukes. Israel would be so isolated at the time, they would have to act alone, and then the world would turn on them. Am I wrong on that? Or is it still yet to come? We've waited seven years, and it is still in the pipeline. We've got to get out of that pipeline. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I talked about just last year because they have happened this weekend. The, the stories that I am talking to you about um, uh, today, those for that first hour with all of the God stuff and now all of the stuff from Occupy and all over the world. I don't believe, and I asked both Pat and Stu this morning on the air, has there ever been, and Tiffany, you would know, has there ever been a weekend or a period even in a month where so many of the things that I said happened all at once? Not a 48-hour period. 48 hour period. I've never seen anything like this. And really what it is, is if you remember, I've talked to you about the birth pangs. Now, this is when I was over at CNN. I said the birth pangs, is, it's an important analogy. They get closer and closer and stronger and stronger. And the things that I'm going to show you, and I showed you this last hour, are gravely disturbing. If you're not disturbed by those, you're dead. Um, and the things I'm going to show you are disturbing because of history. One year ago, when we were in a safer situation uh, than we are today, I told you some of these things. You told your friends, and your friends disagreed with you on, you know, that's never going to happen. And you argued back and forth. And people will still argue the semantics on things. And don't engage in any of that. I want you to look at these things tonight and see that they've happened and what it means and the ramifications. And I want you to see this show as a map of where you are. When, when these things that I tell you happen, I, I tell you them so, A, you can have credibility with your friends if any of them are still open-minded enough to say, oh my gosh, it did happen, and you told me about it a year ago, uh, so you have some credibility. But more importantly, as a measurement of signposts of where you are, it's a mile marker. Where are we? How fast are we traveling to this birth? So you know how fast you have to move to be prepared. If this pace continues, uh, which I, ca I can't imagine, but uh, you know what? I have a very bad feeling um, of things, but I'm bad at timing. I have a bad feeling about what is coming before the election. If this pace continues, this will truly be the summer of rage, and it's not just in Chicago in 1968. It will be the entire world. I want to show you what the blogs thought were some of my biggest mistakes. Are they, are they over here? Are we going to put this up? They said that were my mistakes. This is a George Soros blog. And I just want to show you this because of um, um, it shows you how people take things out of context and they don't think. They said, I said, the caliphate will start coming to fruition in February 2011. Okay. Let's see. Is that true or not? Well, coming to fruition, yeah, I, I, I think that is. The Middle East now, is it closer or farther from establishing a caliphate? Is it starting to come to fruition? Well, the, here's the answer. The Muslim Brotherhood and the Salafists or whatever they are, they're, they're worse than the Muslim Brotherhood. Both have stated they want to establish the caliphate. And they won 75 seats in Egypt. It is now they who have the privilege of rewriting Egypt's constitution. And when did all of this start to happen? In February of 2011. They say that was a failed prediction. I'm telling you that it's not. And it is moving in that direction. Starfield, watch it. Is it rolling which direction? In fall, here's another one. In fall of 2011, progressives will take to the streets as revolutionaries. 
Okay. Uh, I've told you forever, I'm horrible at timing. They mocked this concept, not the timing, the concept. Adding, Beck continues to fearmonger about civil unrest, widespread riots, and protest and revolution. Well, let's go to the videotape, shall we? I think it speaks for itself. The fact that I was a few months off on timing should pale in comparison to them mocking the entire concept. It's the timing that they're mocking. But look what's happening in our streets. Media Matters also mocked me with this prediction. The summer of rage is about to begin. Answer, it hasn't happened yet, but I've warned you, and it's coming. The progressives now are making plans to make this the summer of their rage. More on that in just a few minutes. Another prediction, the Fed hits the Weimar, uh, Weimar moment. I was talking about rising inflation and how the Fed and our politicians are masking that inflation. Exactly what they tried to do in Weimar, and we continue to do it now, buying our own bonds. Look at what Europe is doing. They're doing what Germany did, and the German people know it. Now, it took several years before Weimar disintegrated into hyperinflation. I started, I think, in 21 or 23. It wasn't until the 1930s that it happened. It's been almost two years since I said that prediction. Well, who is more accurate? See, that's the secret you have to ask yourself. The people who mock that, are they more accurate? Are prices going down for food and oil and, and gasoline and everything else? The thing that run your life, is it cheaper? There are several more steps down the path of Weimar, several more steps down the path of uh, a caliphate. But if you ignore the staircase, before you know it, you'll be down at the bottom of them. Is inflation getting worse? Do you believe your dollar still goes as far as it did two years ago? I saw this chart on Business Insider today. When the Business Insider reports this, this is called head and shoulders, and they said this means it's what's coming to the stock market is doubly doomed. That's a quote. Does Soros spend his money berating them if that happens or doesn't happen? No, nor will I. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'll read it. And I'll see. I look to the star field. Is this possible based on if the star field is rolling one direction or another? Is it rolling forward towards more prosperity, more stability, or the other direction? This is important because this is the way I deal with my business partner. We, uh, I ask him all the time, are we more safe and, uh, and more stable as an economy. Because we become more safe and restrained with our business every year we have this conversation. And, you know, I used to have to deal with him going, Glenn, that's crazy, it's not gonna happen, you know, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. I stopped arguing with him and I said, which, which direction? Is it coming your way towards more prosperity or my way towards more trouble? And we look at the star field. That way you, we don't have an argument. When you see the star field, I'm happy. When I see the star field rolling the other way, I'll be the happiest guy ever and say, great, prosperity is coming. Until that time, we, we uh, take care of ourselves. We hunker down a bit. Don't argue the pieces or argue in semantics. Argue which direction are we headed. Are we headed for a more peaceful, more prosperous, a gentler nation and world or the other direction? I contend the other direction and the consequences of ignoring it are staggering. These things are necessary to point out because they show the symptoms of sickness and real danger that are on the horizon. More of the things we talked about coming to fruition just this weekend. One year ago in January, I talked about radicals, communists, and socialists. I first said that communist, radical Islam, and socialists would unite I later said that they would eventually reach a point, this is important, where they no longer shared common ground because one of them will have grabbed power and then they would fight amongst themselves and one would kill the other. And I said, socialists, you have to be very, very careful because you're fighting against people who believe they have God on their side. They'll kill you. Well, 
international rights organizations. They flocked to Egypt and they joined the Arab Spring, the bandwagon as part of that uniting. Well, what happened this weekend? They are no longer needed because the Muslim Brotherhood has a victory. And guess what? Egypt has decided to ban people from these organizations from leaving Egypt. January 22nd, the son of the Transportation Secretary, Ray LaHood, is among those who have been banned from leaving the country. Think of this. This is somebody's son in the administration who helped this glorious revolution. And now a judge accused him and three others in his group with managing an unregistered NGO and being paid employees of an unregistered organization, and they're no longer allowed to leave. That infraction would carry a penalty of up to five years in jail in Egypt. He's the son of an administration official. By Thursday, January 26, six Americans working for U.S. groups in Egypt are forbidden from, uh, forbidden from leaving the country. And executions will be in the future of some of these groups, God forbid. Because what I told you a year ago is now happening. The Muslim Brotherhood has power. The others are no longer necessary, so they must purge themselves of them. Now, what happens? Will our government respond? Play this mental game with me. Have you even heard this story? What does it say that, that Americans are being restricted and they cannot leave and one of them is a son of an administration official what does that say about our power and our clout in the Middle East that this new government can take and hold an administration officials son and hold him and the US barely says anything but they do tell us we shouldn't travel to Egypt anymore next one of the things that I talked to you about was Google and the social media the Twitter I told you last year on my show at Fox, and I was roundly mocked for this, get away from Google. After a Google executive was in Egypt and was credited with organizing riots online, I decided it's not good to use a product that was that involved in overthrowing any government and generally having some creepy and disturbing privacy policies along with close ties to the government. Not a good combination. So on February 16th, 2011, I said, to quote, I'm just not sure. As I look into Google, I, I want to use their products, uh, but I, I won't use their products unless I have to. Some of their products I think I have to. I'm not leading a boycott. I hate boycotts. You do with your time, your money, and your information what you want. For me personally, I'm not feeling real comfortable about the current direction of Google the more I find out. That was a year ago. Here's what's happening today. Did you go online and try to Google search anything? You probably saw a little box pull up that talks about, hey, our privacy rules have changed. On January 24th of this year, um, they changed their privacy rules. Because of a majority of the privacy rules are now out the window, 60%. I'm looking at this thing, and I don't see one policy, one Google experience tailored for you. Easy to share, easy to work across Google. Protecting your privacy hasn't changed. Okay, most of this is about the candy you're going to get, and not about the privacy changes. Twitter also now has a new censorship plan where they have the power to block tweets in any specific country if the government legally requires them to do so. Dissidents and activists believe the new policy will stifle free speech. No. Here are three books I want you to read. I know you're never going to read this one. In the Garden of Beasts. Um, then uh, The Age of Spiritual mas Machines. I waited 10 years to talk to this guy because I was a nobody when I first read this. This came out about 95. Ray Kurzweil. I'm trying to spend a program with him. I may go up to his office, or I, I don't know. He is one of, he, he's one of the most fascinating guys I've, I've ever met. He can tell you what the future looks like. Um, I want you to read this, and then this, and see if these two match. In the Plex, this is about Google. And when you understand what they're doing and what the future is, your blood will run cold. 
and you'll understand that you're helping them every time you, every, everything you do at Google, you're helping them. And what are you helping them build? Skynet. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is, gang. Skynet. As creepy as it sounds. Read Ray Kurzweil. You'll see it. And he loves it. He thinks it's a great idea. And he's a genius. All right, another headline from the weekend, um, January 28th. Germans float direct EU control over the Greek budget. But the German official said the initiative is being discussed among the 17 nation currency blocks, finance minister, because Greece has repeatedly failed to fulfill its commitments under the current, you know, uh, I don't know how many European billion uh, euros that they've given them as a lifeline. Now here's what I said. I said on November 29, 2011, that there, there would come a time when they would control the Greek economy. I said Germans would take charge in handling Greece's economy. On November 29th, 2011, I called Germany the engine of Europe, saying that their neighbors are looking for them to bail out the rest of Europe. And I said the Germans would eventually resent that. And then they would start to take over because they would have a right to. And then Europe would resent Germany. And it would sow all of the seeds of this last discontent. It's heading this way, evidenced this weekend. Is the star field headed my way or the other way? Just last weekend, Davos, Soros, and the Lords of Finance have declared that the EU hasn't done enough to help countries like Greece, and they criticized Germany and put the responsibility share squarely on Germans' shoulders. Don't do this. They said the Germans have to find a way to stimulate Greece's economy.